that 21st century. Doing something mean to it. Do it better than anybody you ever seen. Do it. Screams from the haters. Got a nice ring to it. I guess every superhero need his theme music. What's up, guys? Welcome to the first episode of a new podcast that I, Joe Ingram One, and Doug Polk, aka WCG Rider, are going to be doing together called the Power Poker Podcast. I brought this idea up to Doug a couple months ago because I thought it would be a great way for people out there to learn more about who Doug is as a poker player and also as a person. Doug was one of the first people I ever really met in online poker about six or seven years ago, and we've been able to remain pretty good friends throughout that time. And I think the friendship that we have together really comes off well in this podcast, and I think it'll be fun for us, and everyone out there will hopefully be able to enjoy it. Now, outside of a couple of PLO podcasts I've done so far, we haven't really ever done anything like this before, so there might be some times when we interrupt each other, and there might be some awkward pauses once in a while when we're unsure who should be talking. But overall, I thought we did a pretty good job for our first time together, and hopefully we will continue to get better at this in the future. So without further ado, I will start the audio I have, and I hope you guys enjoy. Doug Polk, WCG writer, thank you for joining me on the first episode of our PokerCast. No problem. Good to, good to talk to you, Joey. I know, I know. I, was, I haven't talked to you in a couple months since you were in Chicago, and um, I've been wanting to do this podcast series. I, you know, I started my PLO podcast, but this is ultimately the, the, the podcast that I wanted to do, and you know, I talked to you, I've been talking to you about this for a couple months now, and you're the person that I wanted to have on first, because right now in poker, I think your story is one of the most interesting stories, and the people you know, can't really stop talking about you right now. Well, thank you, man. Um, when you came to me with this idea, I, I was actually like, pretty excited to do this, because we've got, we've got quite the history together, and lots of material that I think would be interesting for us to talk about on, you know, even a personal level or a poker level or kind of whatever. So, yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad we're finally getting to do this. I completely agree. So, I just want to let people know that me and you actually have a, a podcast in mind that we're going to do. Maybe we're going to try to do it once every two, three weeks, just kind of depends on our schedules and where we're at. So, so yeah, this is going to be kind of the first episode of, of that in a way yeah, and, yeah um, so did you ever think so look back 2007 2008 I posted a graph on 2 plus 2 in the BBV forum where I played 34,000 hands in a day at full ring poker and you sent me a message saying hey Joe or hey Chicago Joey are you interested in me staking you for 50 cent one dollar and getting better at poker. And I responded back to you, and we kind of got going. At that point in time, did you ever think that years later, I would have rose up and eventually started playing high-stakes PLO and winning, and that at some point in time, you would be debatably, debatably, depending on who you ask, if you ask yourself the best heads-up, no-limit player in the world, what would you have said if, I t if someone told us that back in the day? You know, honestly, in a way, I uh, I could have seen it happening. <laughs> I could have seen it happening. I, I mean, like, so so the reason the reason why I, I picked you to kind of be on the team that I was working with back then was I just saw a lot of heart. You know, I saw a lot of heart. I saw maybe maybe not quite all the talent yet, but I saw the heart, and I knew that if we worked together, that we could do some great things. Now, I didn't realize that along the path we would have some negative 30 buy in sessions we're going to we're going to we're going to get into that they're going to so but, that's the part know. that's the probably the time you didn't see the the you didn't see the success potentially coming from my direction for sure yeah it, it was it was it was a long road okay but, so we're going to start let's start slightly before this time so one of the the times the things i remember that was one of the biggest influences in my actual poker career it's what spawned the ideas for me to do my 50,000 hands in a day prop bet when I ended up doing a prop bet where I played 600,000 uh, no limit full ring hands in a month. And then when I 
once again, when I did my Supernova Elite two and a half months prop bet and I played 500,000 hands of PLO in a month, all these ideas came from your initial prop bet years ago where you tried to make 400 buy-ins in one month at 25, 10 cent, 25 cent full ring. Now, people might not have an idea of how easy or hard that is, but that's, that's a very, very hard, challenging, difficult thing. So can you bring people back and talk about that prop bet, that initial, what was your motivation for doing that? Sure. And this actually came up the other day, uh, a, a month or so ago. I forgot who I was exactly talking with. But they said, hey, are you that? Are you that? And I, and I thought they were going to say, like, I mean, there's so many things they could say. They could say, like, something about, like, heads up and L, something about, like, are you, that, you know, are you that PUA guy that I read that was coaching? Sure, sure, why not? <laughs> I'm like, hey, are, are you that? Are you the twenty-five cent or sorry, the ten cent twenty-five cent guy? And I was like, oh great, <laughs> <laughs> still, still the ten cent twenty-five cent guy. No, no, but but it's it's part of my past, man. And and okay, so I guess to kind of like go through that prop bet, um, mm -hmm. and that that was before everyone like was trying to do prop bets. You know, that I was agree. Like you were, you literally laid the foundation. Like I said, I think I took the prop bets up from that point on. And now in BBB. Well, you won yours, so yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm a smart prop better. <laughs> so, but the, the prop bets in BBV now are, are they're kind of just, no one really, they're kind of by the wayside. But you like, you like, you're like the card runners of prop bets, essentially. You kind of got in there on the ground floor. Yeah, so, I guess, like, kind of, I'll tell you where I was coming from uh, with that. Yeah, like, what was your mo Like, why did you want to do that? What was your motivation for doing that? So, but before I even started, before I even started the prop bet, I looked at it as an opportunity to kind of get some free advertising, uh, or possibly some profitable advertising. And the first thing that I did was I went to a couple of the major sites. I really only went to Full Tilt and Stars, but I was prepared to t talk to some other sites to to t try and get like the best deal that I could possibly get while doing this, right? So by deal, you mean where they would sponsor you in a way, or what? Yeah, because, I mean, I'm going to be promoting their site mm. by doing this. And, and really, I was just hoping for Poker Stars because Poker Stars, you can 24 table, is the best software, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, would have, I would have settled for full tilt because... <laughs> settled you, for full tilt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even though you can only 16 table on there, um, so you know... Been... Yeah, it would have been a bit harder. Yeah, we game sucked a little bit more. Um, whatever. So, anyway, I, I went to full tilt. I went to stars, and I was like, "Hey guys, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to accomplish this like ridiculous prop bet, and, and no one's done this before. So, if you want to work with me on this and you know kind of be part of it, then I'm willing to do it on your site and give all the advertising to your site." And, you know, within like a day, I think PokerStars responded to me and they're like, yeah, we want you to do this with us. Um, if you do this, we'll buy you into a 10K Euro event. So they basically gave me like, you know, at the time, like 13 or 14K to do this on PokerStars. So I was getting like 14K from Stars and then I knew that even if I didn't make all of the, all of the money – that I was gonna for sure play a lot of hand, so I'd get like a bunch of rake back. So I was looking at between rake back and what starts getting me, I was gonna get about probably 25 to 30k, and you know I only put up like 25 to 30k on the side where I was getting I think two and a half to one, two mm -hmm. one to one. Uh, so like basically the way that the whole thing was set up was I get my name out there, um, I get some you know some good advertising with the people on like two plus two or you know just the public. And then if I, you know, God forbid, win this, then I'm going to make like 100K, right? <laughs> so, so I basically was, was free rolling with a shot to win 100K. And at that time, like I had way less money, so that was way more significant. Mm -hmm. And I still think to this day that if, if I hadn't have had the trouble that I had sleeping, I, I might have been able to pull it off. But it was a win-win for me. I, it, was still, it still worked out. Okay, so let's, let's talk about this a bit more because there might only be – a few other people that have done a prop bet like that and I happen to be one of them as <laughs> <laughs> as I've you know like I, I played uh, I've had to do the first prop bet I did was when I played 600,000 hands in a month so I was playing 15 16 hour dates and when you're playing 
for that long and you and you realize like I can make all this money so I had a problem sleeping too did you try to take any sleeping pills that's what I ended up doing I ended up yeah. taking sleeping pills well I actually tried to take some of the natural stuff first mm -hmm. I tried melatonin which is complete bullshit doesn't work it, yeah doesn't it work does well. not work I don't know <laughs> and it, I've actually talked to some people and they say that they swear by melatonin I think it's it, mental yeah, I I just don't know, but for me that was not an option. So I tried I tried that. Um, I tried to like get like some some like running in during the day to like you know be able to sleep more at night, but mm -hmm. I I didn't really have any kind of actual pills, and also I didn't really have a good connection for that. So I just did it, did it all natural, and I just it, I just had too hard of a time sleeping, man. So do you think that? You couldn't sleep because you were just so you were all the hand you were. Cause I know I was dreaming poker hands oh, in my man, mind. Oh man, that happened so much during that. Uh, I just like go to sleep and then like I've got aces and then like exactly and then, like, yes. And then like I wake up and then there's like that weird time period before like you know that weird time period where you wake up and you're like okay that was a dream right? Yes. And, you're, like, yes. and you kind of remember the hand. And you're like but wait was it a dream? And then you like quickly check. You're like. Have like recent hands to see if I can no, have I, I I did I, that happen. every night. Yeah. And yeah, that happens to you. And yeah. so plus also just the idea that I might win this prop I might actually be able to do this and I'm gonna make this money and put myself in a position to sort of be set potentially for life if I make the right decisions after that. Do you think that was something that that was, you know, in your mind you felt kind of pressure and because of that, you couldn't sleep. I'm not sure that I looked at it as I would be set for life. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think that it was more just about like, obviously it's about the money, but it's kind of also about like proving that you can do it. You know. I agree. Well, I, I think I I I don't remember much about what was your image at that time. What were people? Because you you were pretty active on two plus two from from the micro stakes kind of. So when I first started playing like ten cent, twenty five cent, and posting on two plus two. You were kind of already like a guy that was been around for a bit of time, and and but I remember there was I, think, I feel like there was a reputation of, about you at that point that was like some good, some bad, kind of like now essentially. Some people liked you, some people didn't like you, and your results were I can't remember quite remember. Well, but, okay, so the worst thing that happened to me during that time frame was PTR, <laughs> right. because um, and, and not to just sound like you know a crybaby about this, because like I hate people that that bitch about running bad because that's just not the way you should do things. <laughs> but I think I had like a year of time where I was playing mid stakes, like two, four, three, six, um, some five, ten. And I, I wanna say that I ran something along the lines of like sixty or seventy buy ins under E V at full ring. Which is... over the over the course of like a year. Mm -hmm. Right? And when your win rate is supposed to be like two E V V or something, and you run that far under under E V, you're just never gonna win. And, and, and I'm not saying that I was good. I'm not saying you know I did I did lots of things wrong, but I was definitely a winner in the mid stakes games that I was playing in, and like I just wasn't winning because it just never never went my way. So I think that I kind of got this image of oh he's not very good. He like he's broken even for forever. Like I, I mean that's, I'm sure I'm that's I'm what I remember. P yeah, my PTR wall I got like harassed all the time. Uh, yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was right. actually that was. Those PTR comments, I remember these vividly because I was the same way. I had millions of hands and break-even win rate for the most part. And those PTR comments, I swear to God, I th those might be some of the most important things that of the reasons that I, I decided to just say fuck these people and just go insane and, and you know, never <laughs> – well, it kind of never stopped till I had success basically like – did yeah. you think did that did you use that as any sort of motivation for your own self? Um, I, I definitely felt I definitely kind of felt the heat from that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I definitely felt like I kind of had something I had to prove. Right, because it's interesting but, when you put yourself out there in some place like two plus two, and then you you there's a a public website with your results and ever, all these anonymous people are looking at it like oh look at this guy he talks all this shit on the forums and. Here he is. Well, He's not even a winning poker. Like, what? What is this guy talking about? Well, now I have to deal with that. It's just on High Stakes TV. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've been. I don't really yeah. ever go on there. What's that like on there these days? Oh, High Stakes TV. 
Yeah, I don't. I've never. I've never. Really oh, gone I mean, like, it, unless you opt out, um, which a lot, a lot of the guys opt out, but you can like look up everyone's results and it has their graph and like. So how is your graph on there right now? Um, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. I think I'm up like. Um, uh oh. A millionish on. Uh oh, so you think that's good, huh? If you you think. You think? That yeah. Okay. I I don't know. I'm not up a million on. I I think uh, I'm, I don't know. Maybe it's only eight hundred now. Is that good? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you remember those top hats on PTR? I used to dream about getting a top hat. Oh yes. man, I always wanted a top hat. And I, I remember I, I used to talk with uh with Del. Oh, I'm up a million on full tilt. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, season, season. But I remember talking with Deldar, and Deldar was like, "Okay, first off, Deldar is like an amazing troll. I I, I kind of feel like his entire thing is just trolling. I, I actually I respect Deldar a lot in." Um, a lot of other ways. He's very successful. He did really well for himself. He a beast. ran super hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I remember back in the day, he would he would be chatting with me on on AIM. I think at the time or whatever. This and back in the day. This is back this in is the back, day. This is back in the day. I yeah. think it was AIM. I think it was AIM. But whatever. And he would be just playing like 501k. Like, <laughs> There would be like four to six tables going, and like people would just be battling, and he would just be buying in for like 50k, and like basically just short stacking those games. Yeah. And he just won a ton off of Ivy and a bunch of other people, if I recall. And um, he did this. I mean, he. It was a time period when, when I was playing a lot of the, I was grinding every single day, all day, and he started playing PLO again, and he posted in the forums like, I'm just gonna make a million dollars just to, just to make it, just to show you guys I can make it, and. I mean, he ran. I he ran so fucking good, but I'm pretty sure he got fairly close, which is just it's kind of a testament to just how sick he is. I mean, he did it yeah. at no limit and PLO, which is. You know, I actually kind of went into this year, and one of my one of my goals was going to be to make a million in PLO. Well, that was going to be one of my goals. Well, in my last podcast, my first hand was actually a hand that you and Odd Odson played. Uh oh. Yeah, and you, I actually called the play you made bad because it was a hand where Odson, you raised on the button, Odson called from the blinds. The hand doesn't necessarily matter, but you che- he checked and you bet pot on the turn. So you see bet and then you bet pot on the turn, and I thought it was just a terrible spot for you to bet pot because I felt like you didn't need the betting pot there, made no, like, it didn't really achieve too much. But I said you you know your bet size is better, and I'm sure you have a reason for why you're betting that in that spot. But I thought I think it, if you play that same hand seven eight months from now, I think you're gonna play the hand a lot different, just because you're still you know you're PLO, you're still raw at the game, you're good heads up, you know sizes, you know you know what play to make to get your opponent to do what you want them to do. It's just you know hmm. f- formulating. The actual, you know what I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I understand. Well, there's there's a lot of different things that you have to consider when you're looking at PLO. Mm-hmm. That it's like, yeah, what are you saying? Like when you come from no limit, you've been playing so much no limit. What are your what do you when you look at PLO and you're playing a hand? Like what is your mindset right now? You know, it's a mix of things. The first thing that I try to think about when I'm, I guess, playing a different game type, um, and I try to like kind of break things back down to how my equity runs versus their range. That's like always the most important, no matter what game you're playing, no matter what's going on. So you kind of start there, and then you try to like, you know, put the puzzle pieces into place with all your hands, right? Mm. The thing is, there's just an ass load of hands. You know? right. and that's, <laughs> so like, yeah. you don't get the same luxury of just getting to, uh, to count combos per se, <laughs> there's not going to be any combo counting. So it, it's difficult for for me, I guess, as someone that's kind of new to PLO, to to correctly assess what I should be doing. Now, now I still understand all the concepts. I still understand like all the frequency stuff. I still understand like the way like equities do versus each other to some extent. So in, in a lot of ways, like my PLO game has gotten a bit better in the past year or two. Um, mm-hmm. And if you look at my win rate, my win rate is actually quite good. The problem is I keep losing at 100, 200, and that's a pretty big game. Okay, so my question is, why play 100? Like, why play that? I mean, 
just because you have the money, do you feel like you have to play these stakes? Like, I think we've had this conversation before. I, I'm, I definitely asked you this before. Why don't you play 10, 20, 25, because 50? Why I, don't you get better? I, you don't think you can get better I mean, there? I'm, I'm only playing people that I think are pretty bad. Um, like Odd Odson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> You're so funny, dude. <laughs> I'm only playing. I'm only playing people that I think are bad, and then you proceed to name the the guy up the most amount of money at PLO within the past year. And I understand. Wait, 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 wait. Joey. <laughs> he's up the most at six max. That's very true. That's did he win any in heads up? Because well, I don't think he did. I don't think. I don't think that. I mean, obviously, I wish there was the PTR time machine where we can go filter. All uh, right, you know, stakes, filter this, filter that. But I guess I might agree that his heads up play. He. I mean, he's definitely I mean, a better six max player. If I'm wrong, player. if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. Well, uh, you know, I'm 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 a six max he... PLO player. I'm certainly not a heads up PLO player. I mean, who has he beaten? That's a good point. I, I'm, you know, I'm, maybe I'm. I the, he beat the it. He beat the congressman from Norway. I know that. Mm. So mm. an impressive win. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so like for example, I would I would never play Sauce. Um, I I I bet you Sauce is just like. Sauce has just got to be one of the best right now. At heads and, up PLO. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I just the way. What, okay, so what I learned about Sauce after playing him in No Limit for like God knows how many hands, <laughs> is that the the guy is just like a genius for sure. And, and like, the thing is, when when we're playing No Limit, we're kind of playing my game, and I get to kind of like, I get to kind of counter what he's doing in like really like. Um, really smart ways. So like uh, without going too into too much detail. In no limit we're kind of like um we're, we're kind of more protected because I I'm more more protected because I know what's going on. I can counter him in very smart ways. I know like exactly what frequency I'm going to have certain hands, etc., etc., etc. But in PLO like he's he just spends so much time working on his game and he's just so well-rounded and balanced out that uh I just I just kind of feel like he's got to be the best. He's just, got, he's just, he's just very good. You haven't really played many people at heads up PLO that might be good, so you're kind of just taking. What, I mean, I, how you I, think I played, his skills. I played up. sauce. I played sauce a little bit at um, PLO. Yeah, not too much. And I, I played D D M F I. He's quite good. Yeah, I think uh, he's. Uh, I think he's great. He's a really good player. He's, I, ri- he's I, risen. He's risen so fast in the stakes, and he's just. Yeah, had I success. played. Well. I played Lafort. He's good. Mm-hmm. Um, I I played a little bit with Ben Tolerine. Mm-hmm. Uh, he seems good. All those guys seem very good. Well, those are basically, in my opinion, as well, that some of the top heads up players right now on Poker Stars. But for most part, po- there's no, there's really no more heads up play, especially since Zoom's been introduced. There's really no reg on reg violence for the most part it's just mainly... oh i disagree with that for sure have you been seeing action run on poker stars lately yeah it's always running now. oh i don't really rail who have you seen I mean, been playing right 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 now pimpy limpy and urasov are going Pimpy limpy's not a he's not a he's not a, he's like come on what are you talking about pimpy limpy and and urasov 5100 on stars right now Pimpy man. limpy is not a, a battler he doesn't oh you don't a, know pimpy then you don't know pimpy at all he battles people oh yeah i was under the impression he was it's like the only person he plays is this Eurosoft I, he, guy. He kind of he kind of picks his spots. He kind of picks his spots. I've never even heard of Eurosoft before. He's just a heads up player. I, I actually got an NL session versus him last month where I won twenty seven buy-ins off of him. That's it. Yeah, twenty by fifty. <laughs> we do some quick math. Do, 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 do. It's a good got amount of money. S- got that spending money. So what did you <laughs> what did you do to celebrate that night? Um. Ah, I didn't really celebrate that much. I didn't really celebrate. I, Do you celebrate I, anymore? I mean, you know what? You know what? I think. Okay, so if I was gonna, if I was gonna celebrate, I had the the night to celebrate. I think two months ago, maybe a month and a half ago. I tell me more. I was playing versus, or I played a couple sessions versus uh, Victor, and is there one for people that might is, be is unaware who Victor is? Is there one? Yes, correct. Okay. And. <laughs> And he had just beaten up somebody for a bunch of money. I want to say it was like the 08 guys. So the way that it works is, Isildur, it's kind of all about his account balance. It's always in play. Okay. So if, if he's got 700K in his account, 700K is in play. 
And so when when he's running it up, it, you know, if you play him, there's going to be some really big swings because what he's going to do is if he wins, he's going to challenge you to 400, 800 deep, and then you're going to have to play there. And then if he loses, he generally will lose a lot. So, you know, you're you're in for quite the session. And I had had a few bad sessions previously, in um, I think in that in that game, but then also some PLO. Basically, I've been on kind of a downswing. And then Isildur sat me and. I knew that he had a very high account balance, and I went on to win 660k in that session. I, I think I remember this day. Yeah, okay. and I, I was in a downswing, and I, I had sold some pieces, so I, I think I had like 50-ish percent of myself or something. Mm -hmm. I want to say. Okay, so let's uh, I'm gonna let's let's stop there because I've I have a few more questions I'd like to ask you before we get past because that's kind of a what you just described. Not many people do. That's a unique experience. So. You're playing these high stakes against Isildur. Right. Let's talk about action. So you said you sell 50%. Is that a normal thing for you? Yeah, I'm not going to – I don't want to go through exactly all my pieces for all games. Okay. Um, but generally my, my strategy is, is I try to pick – I try to pick amounts that, you know, if I go on a large downswing, I can keep my piece relatively consistent. Mm-hmm. Because the last thing you want to do is like let's say, let's let's go back to that session. Let's say that I lose 700k instead of win it. Mm -hmm. Then now if I have like you know 70 percent of myself or something, I'm gonna have to drop a lot in the next session, and it it hurts my ability to like um, to have pieces of myself, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's really important before you even play a hand or at high stakes. To understand what your bankroll is, to understand what your risk tolerance is, to understand when you look at playing for those kinds of stakes, it's really important that you have a piece of yourself that you're going to be comfortable with, but you're also going to be happy with. And it just seems to be that whenever you have huge wins, you you kind of went a little conservative, and whenever you just get blasted, you always had more. But it's important to realize that you know this is a marathon. I'm going to be playing poker for probably the rest of my life. Um, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed the game of poker and I, it, I'm good at it. So there's no need for me to load up and have like ridiculously huge pieces of myself when the game is big. I mean, 501k is literally the, the highest stake on the internet. <laughs> uh, I remember you were, you were very active in those games for a while. <laughs> so when you, when you sell pieces, how does that work? Well, it, it actually is very simple. Um, I have like, I guess, sort of a, like a line of credit with several players where mm -hmm. I can kind of just put anything I want in their tab, you know. So it's uh, essentially they're going to take action no matter what, yeah. and you just let them know before the session on Skype or text, like, "Hey, you have XXX percentage of me. I'm gonna play right now." I, I'll, actually, we have like a a record sheet, and I don't even tell them; I just do it. Oh, that seems like it takes a lot of trust then. Yeah, but I, I, these are guys that I've all, you know, won a lot of money along the way, and trust me, so. So what is the procedure for you if you have a big win or a big loss? You send to them right away, they send to you, they, why, like, how does that work exactly? No, generally, generally, we kind of just, like, let everything roughly kind of hang until, like, we reach settling points, um. See that's that's so interesting because you're you're winning and losing hundreds of thousands of dollars and you're just letting it settle. You're just like, you know, in any other world, I think this the idea of doing this is just like what the f what the fuck. Well, we're poker, we're talking about like we're talking about like three people that are basically you know my best friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it's not like random Joe Schmo on the internet. Oh, sorry, sorry, no offense. <laughs> 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 It's not like I'm just randomly like, okay, hey man, you owe me 200k, but like, it's, it's cool, it's cool, just just, just don't sweat it for now. You know, maybe, maybe I'll win it for you back. I think people just really don't, well, I mean, how would they understand, but most people don't really understand that whole world of staking, or buying pieces, how you pay out, how you receive, you know, like, it's just such a yeah. foreign concept to most people. Yeah, okay, so like, for example, this is actually something that I, I talked about on the 2 plus 2 player cast as well, mm -hmm. but I was in Australia. And one of like one of my uh, one of my online contacts um, hit me up and was like, "Hey, if you have any interest in playing like, these live games, then I can get you, you know, a bunch of money." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm probably not that interested. I might play a couple, 
Uh, I'm definitely going to play this cash game that runs at the end, and then, you know, I'm going to play all these games. So if you want to, if you want to play, like, or sorry, sorry, they said, if you want to play, I can get you some money. And I was like, okay, sure, whatever. So the next day, I'm at my 25k t tournament table, and some guy just comes to my table, and, and I later found out that it was Phil Bort, but at the time I didn't really know who it was. And he just looks at me and goes, WCG writer? And I was like, yeah. He's like, here you go. And he just gives me 210K. There was no, like, scheduled pickup. There was no, just like, it just like, here you go. Here's 200K. And, like, everyone at the table just kind of looks at me, and I just kind of look at everyone. And someone's like, who is that? And I was like, I don't really know. <laughs> I have two questions. Okay. So what does $210,000 look like that he gives you? What is it? What is it? How does it well, look? In Australia, their system's great. So if, if it's a 25K chip, it's actually a plaque. Mm -hmm. So it was just like eight plaques. So this guy comes up to you, hands you eight plaques, and goes away. Right. Yes. How are you feeling right then? Like, how does it feel to ha get handed $200,000 by someone you don't know who they are? Like, what does that feel like? It's, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I, would I mean, it's pretty sweet. I can't imagine just someone walking up to me and just handing me two hundred thousand dollars, and me, and me not knowing what's happening, like who this person is, and well, why. Well, the thing is, you know, it's all going to get settled out eventually, right? But like, you kind of, you just have to be careful. Like, there's certain people. I think you have to be careful. I agree. I, I feel yeah. Like I, I mean, it, I've been burned for a really large amount of money over the over the uh, years, unfortunately. And the thing that I've come to learn is this. Do not put your money into things that you don't at least fully understand the risks, mm -hmm. but generally trust the people you're working with. Now, sometimes you're going to have to have, sometimes you're going to have to put money into some spots where you can't really fully understand the risks and whatever is going to happen. Why uh, are you going to have to do that? Like, what, what may, why well, do you I, have I to? Well, I mean, just, okay, so like, well, let's just say, for example, like when you look at investing and stuff. Like, like I'm a big believer in cryptocurrencies. I think that cryptocurrencies are the future, and that's that's the direction that the world's going. Does that mean that Bitcoin is like a slam dunk? This is going to make me a ton of money? No, it doesn't. Right? The sites that the sites that I'm on could go down. Bitcoin could crash. Like all kinds of shit could happen. But at least I understand and I'm fully aware of the risks. The same thing. Um, it used to be my strategy when I looked at like poker sites. I used to play on Euro sites. I used to play on like all these other sites like iPoker, Micro, Party back when they had high stakes, whatever. Mm -hmm. And bes besides the fact that a lot of these sites have been cutting out the games that I play, I I reached a point where I had just gotten scammed for so much and so many things had just happened where I was like, you know what? I want to play on sites where I'm safe. I I want to just know that my account balance I can always get. The site's going to take care of me, and I'm not going to get scammed anymore. Well, that's actually that's interesting because you know I'm living in the United States right now, and when I first got back here, I was playing on um, like on game, iPoker, and these other sites. I was but I was playing the higher stakes games, the the 2020, the 2550, and like I always felt just really uneasy about it. And you know, obviously, well, you I, that might be. <laughs> I, I I agree. I should because. Even on Poker Stars, like I, I trust Poker Stars. I've played, you know, hundreds of thousands of high stakes hands on there. I've never suspected anything going on, but there's just something in my mind when I was like play on game, for example, and that I think even having that idea in your head, it just can mess with your confidence so much that you end up just thinking these crazy things, and you you put you it like it just kind of spirals in your mind to a point where then you start playing your B plus game or your B game and you don't even realize it. So I actually stopped playing anything above 510 on any site that's not Poker Stars full tilt. Yeah, that, and that's fair. There's there's at least a few cases on uh, micro gaming where you know there were some suspicious people playing where it seemed like they could see my cards or whatever. And even if you're only getting cheated. One out of every fifty times, or one out of every hundred times, when that does happen, you always lose, and you not only lose, you get crushed, mm -hmm. right? So, this is part of, unfortunately, what online poker has kind of come to now, is part of 
gauging a game isn't just what's you know am I better than this guy? It's what's the chance that they can they're cheating me? You know what's the chance that I never beat this guy? And if that even hits like five or ten percent, you just can't play. Honestly, even if it's like two or three percent, you can't play. Like, right. like ed- edges are smaller nowadays, you know. Mm-hmm. Unless you're me, and then your win rate's still like 15 BB, but still, <laughs> <laughs> but win- uh, edges are definitely smaller, and you, you just can't get cheated. So, well, yeah. I kind, I, I kind of, I kind of like now that I'm at the point where I only play like a certain few people, you know. Yeah, because that way you know, you 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 think you know what's going on for the most part. Yeah, well, I I trust like all the other guys that are kind of at the top, like, I really trust, like, I, I'm sure that if Ike had a way to see my whole cards, that he wouldn't do it, you know, because he's a good guy, I'm sure that if Sauce did the same, he could do that as well, you know, I, and, and I'm, but basically all of the top guys I, I trust, so they're all, actually, speaking of top guys, one of the more controversial things that you may have said in the past, is where you spoke on your top ten list, do you like where do you where do you stand on that now? What's your idea for can you talk about the top? We don't have to really get too in depth into the five through ten guys, but you know, who are your top five right now? Who are the guys you think are the best? Who do you think are overrated, underrated? Okay, sure. Yeah, since since I made the last list, I, I kinda debated having a power ranking where I update it every so often. I think you need that. I think there should one hundred percent be a power ranking that you update often. <laughs> I, I think that would be great. Maybe I needed to like figure that out more, um, a little more concretely. But yeah, I, I really do want to do a power ranking. I, I think that it's fun, and I, I enjoy talking about it. Well, so. I think I think rankings, and this is something that was um, I, I read on Twitter that someone posted. Cause they were talking about how the whole uh, global poker index thing for tournaments, like the casual poker fan, love rankings. They love rankings list power rankings it doesn't matter who makes the rankings up it could it could be based on fact it could be based on opinion but people just love rankings and you know what joey one of the reasons i do the power ranking or i did it before is because i find it really fun and i even though poker is my job and you know i have to like battle for a lot of money and i have to work on i'm responsible for a lot of things at the end of the day i still like having fun Mm -hmm. And it's fun to me to kind of sit down, like look at a list of players. But oh yeah, he's kind of here, he's there. Oh yeah, I, I liked what he was doing, and then kind of like put together my take on who I think is the best. I, I, I enjoy that. Well, I, and, that's and, why we do this. That's why this podcast is now existing because it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. You know, it's, it's fun to do. So, who would you say are in your top uh, top five right now? Let's, let's, all right. Let's get so, an here. no one has beaten me really. So, of course gonna, not. The best, de- debatably. Course, the best, not. debatably. Debatably, debatably. It's always debatable. When I, you know, it's funny. When I talk about, I, sometimes I get messages from people that, like, knew us both a long time ago, but they haven't really kept up so much. And they're like, uh, what's, like, what's, like, what's up with Doug? I've been reading some things about him. I'm like, I'm like, well, he's the best heads-up player in the world now. Debatably. <laughs> like, it depends who you ask. If you ask him, he is the best. If you ask the the random guy who posts in the NBG he's he's the fucking worst but it's always I've had I've had this conversation more than once recently and it's always a fun conversation to have so yeah. I I'm, I like talking about you know I'm I, obviously like I've been friends with you for a long time and it makes me just as a friend extremely happy and like proud that you've reached this level it, you know it's so cool like it's really it's a really cool thing Thanks, to just man. watch and just you know, kind no, of be a you. part of I, I appreciate that, and I I still remember back when I was playing like twenty five fifty for the first time, and like you messaged me on Facebook, be like, "Yo, dog, like twenty five fifty, like that's legit." <laughs> okay, I never I never talked like that, but I remember I was really excited. I was like, "Oh, what do you like?" What, I was like, yeah. "What do you have here?" And you're like, "Oh, I got aces." So, so, sorry, sorry. Say, say that, but instead of California, make it like real Chicago. Um, <laughs> I don't. I actually, I kind of might have said something like that, like "Yo, yo, what's up, bro? You playing twenty five fifty? Do you crazy or something?" You know, I would have said probably. I was yeah, like twenty three at that time. I, I I talked way different. I remember that. I was but I was ex- yeah. I was excited about those, those we, were exciting times. Negranu berated me for how much I say like. We say like a lot. I I do. And I was at the table at, at my 100K, or maybe it was 250K, and Negreanu says, all right, Doug, let's do this. Let's play a game. The game is, if you say like, you owe the other person $100. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And I said, I am out. <laughs> so what's your opinion on him, actually? Well, he's pretty, well, he's let's, pretty let's, active let's... In, on Twitter. He's pretty active on YouTube. His voice is probably one of the biggest right now in poker. Yeah, we, we can we can talk about him in a second. Let, let, okay. Let's go back to the top ten list that real quick. Try, I'm, I'm trying to get on that. I wanna. I'm curious to hear the list myself still. Yeah, we we just have so much to talk about. We really do. Like we actually, I just want to tell people we have a lit. I wrote down like a, 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 a just like a little quick outline I do before I do podcast of different topics me and Doug could talk about and. <laughs> We're there's, not. We're, we've got. So many. This might be like a, a hundred five, hundred and five parter because I feel like <laughs> me, we've had, we've we could have we could talk about so many different things that we've done. It, which is. It's always great to hear your beautiful voice, Joey. Wow. Oh, oh my God. Wow. You know how to talk. Is this how you, is this what you say to the ladies? Is this what uh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Got a sweet talk. Is this a secret? Do you tell your girlfriend she's beautiful every day? Of course. I text my girlfriend every day when I wake up. Oh, uh, beautiful. How, well, she's beautiful. If you think your girlfriend's beautiful. Uh-huh. It's, yeah, do you think if no, you, sure. So, Doug, do you think if you had a girlfriend, and I'm not saying a guy like you, you know, uh, tall, 6'4", in shape, successful, <laughs> got your own house in Vegas, travel the world, best heads up Nolan player in the world debatably, uh, likes to hang out with Clink, I mean... I, I, like, I like you just, like, like squeeze debatably in there. Like. Well, it's, de- it's debatably. If we ask some other people, we're going to have a debate. No, no, so, no, no, no it, is, it is a debate, isn't it always? Debatably, it's a debatable subject. But, you know, obviously you probably wouldn't ever have a girlfriend you didn't find attractive, but let's say you did. Do you think you could still lie to her and tell her she's beautiful every morning? Um... No, probably not. So if there's a guy listening to this, and we're suggesting you tell your girlfriend every day in the morning that she's beautiful, and he literally doesn't think she's beautiful, you don't think he's going to be able to tell her she's beautiful either way? Well, me or random people, I mean. Well, uh, let's... let's. I'm an honest man, Joe. You know that. I'm an honest man. Honest kid like you. I, yeah, all right. Honest. You know, I don't think I could. I've thought about this because... Well, we're gonna we're gonna get off tangent again. Let's get back into the list. Let's not talk about anything else before we solidify this list that people want to hear about. Give me the list. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So the list. So I'm at the top. Just do um, just do top five. We do ten. We're gonna get I'm, we're gonna get lost after like sure, eight, seven. Sure, no problem. Uh, I would say Ike is still number two. I played Ike again recently. Mm-hmm. He uh, he's doing some interesting stuff. Um, interesting. Definitely, definitely, he's doing some limping. He, uh, I, I had to kind of come up with some new, new stuff for that, but he's, I'm not, sh- I'm not sure I like it or not, but I guess time will tell. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I'd still keep him at number two. Um, after that, you know, I still think Jungle is probably number three. So have you, have you uh, played him, uh, lately? I think I might have I, saw I, a post with some I hands. played, I actually played him a bit and I played Ike a bit. So, uh, just because you have a some type of relationship with Jungle Man in the past, if you thought he was bad, would you say you think he's bad? Yeah, definitely. But you don't think he's bad? You think he plays well? No, no, I, I don't think he's bad. Okay. I, I think that he has a different style than most other top guys, but I don't think he's bad at all. Has he taught you everything you know? Everything I know. Is he your, is he your hero? I, I'm basically just like Jungle Man 2.0. You can ask anyone the high stakes thread, like we play exactly the same. Is that true? No. Oh, okay. I, I, I was like, wait, is that actually a true thing? And it, I, because, you know, you, everyone probably thinks, like, Jungle Man took over your account at some point in time. He then he then locked you in a room where you guys discussed heads-up yeah. strategy for 14 hours a day for two years straight. And then you yeah, came out with was... this program, and then you were playing 501k. Oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah, the, the program. The program was great. Yeah, which program was that, by the way? Um, it was uh, my uh, poker solver program. It does all the solving. <laughs> so you essentially... <laughs> <laughs> While you're playing, you just imported the hand. Some people might believe this, but if you, uh, all right, if you believe this, that's fine. But so you actually had a program on your computer, right, where you would just kind of drag the hand, the table into the program, then it would pop up what to do, what percentage of the time, and then you would just do that, right? Um, are we we like still joking around? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. If, I I mean, if people want to take this as a serious, then I think. I I mean, like I never had any program that told me to. <laughs> so I mean, like if we're talking about NVG and like people, follow the law, like it, people might the, think the, that the, exists. This PLO, program. The PLO thing was great. So like I'm playing PLO. I like don't really know exactly what I'm doing. I'm, Listen, like, I got a little suspicious around that point in time. So I, I was I, like, I'm, how the fuck's he doing this? I'm trying to learn and. 
but you know, I, I, I've got a lot of tenacity. I'm a battler. I, I, if I get in there, I work hard on my game. You love it in the streets, man. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, so I, I have a story about versus Odd Odson. So about a year ago, a year and a half ago, I played Odd Odson, and we, we were 16 tabling. Okay. That's it? That's, that's it. So you're, you're playing only... 16 tables of heads up? Yeah, simultaneously. Now, I know Odson, and Odson used to play StarCraft, mm-hmm. but little does he know, I also used to play StarCraft. So we're both, like, got gamer backgrounds. So what Odson was hoping was that I wouldn't be able to, like, handle 16 tables, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, like, he would basically just, like, get a free win because he can play all the tables and not time out, and, like, I'd be, like, constantly making mistakes and timing out and whatever. So... Unfortunately for me, I was on my laptop and I didn't have any hotkeys and I didn't have anything. So my, the first session, I lost like I lost like I believe 250k at 5100. And then I was like so angry. I was like, damn it! Like I I should have had like all my stuff set up. Like this is ridiculous. That's it. So I, even though I only had three days left in Canada, I didn't go to bed because I we played during the night. So like it was morning now, and I went out. I bought a monitor. I bought, like, a keyboard, like, whatever. I got my hotkey set up. I put in, like, a one-cent, two-cent grind session to, like, get my hotkeys down. You know, just so I could, like, be quick with them. Then I bought a Run It Once membership. I watched all of Odd Odson's videos. Then I went through all of the match, studied, figured out what I wanted to do, came up with some counters, learned some spots that he was bluffing in the videos, we play the next session. I haven't been to bed yet. I've just been like studying, working, getting my setup for 10 hours. We play the next session. I crush him. And we have this spot where it was like the same spot as in one of the videos where like he was floating way too light. And so I called him with just aces and he just had nothing. And I basically directly won like six or seven K because I got a run at once membership. <laughs> and then I just managed to win most of my money back. And then he didn't play me for another like year or something. But, um, but the thing is, like, even if it's PLO, like, I mean, I'm a fucking battler. I'll get in the streets. I will fight. And, like, I know that I'm not that good at PLO yet, and I know that I'm learning. But I'm going to give it everything that I've got, and I'm going to try really hard, and I'm going to get better. So, so, I think you're, so I think you're dumb, first of all, before I go into that story, because you realize, I, I don't know if you know this, but they actually let you not play them, but get the monitor and the mouse before you – like, they let you go get that first. They, they didn't need they to play do? them. You didn't need he to play did. him and lose two hundred fifty thousand dollars. You could have just well, like, yo, bro. I mean, he's gonna play you sixteen tables no matter what. You could have just. Why didn't you just go get the monitor? First? I, I don't think that my expectation in that session was minus two fifty. In fact, it might have been positive. So you literally thought you were gonna sit down with no mouse, no anything. No, I had a mouse. I had a mouse. Oh well, that changes things. But so you thought you were gonna sit down and just sixteen table heads up PLO, without much and I like you know I, you know what's going on, but you know like. Well, there was there was four there was four tables Seems dumb. no limit in there as well. So it was it was, it was four no limit and twelve PLO. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yo, Yolo, hey Yolo, Doug. That I know I you embraced I that. Lost, I think I lost in the no limit. <laughs> what wow. I can't remember. Um, it was sixteen tables. It was a lot of stuff going on. But anyway, you know, so I I got in there. I battled back. I I won some money back, and then he quit me for like a year. You know? I'd probably quit you in, for a year PLO. if you were 60. And, and, and I was sit, I sat him at 100, 200 PLO, 200, 400 PLO. I, I sat him at like everything for like a long time because I thought he was really bad. I, he still he seems like he got better in our in our more recent session, but I thought that he was genuinely a spot. And based off of like just some simple mathematical elements, he was just making errors. There were just things that he was saying that could not possibly be right. So do you, so, do you think he would play you right now if you wanted to play some long sessions first him? Yeah, for sure. So you think he would play you? Absolutely. He played me 100 or 200 right before I left for America, so I, I'm counting on that. I, well, I'm I'm sure, like me, like many other people, are very interested to watch that happen. And once again, we actually got off track of our list, so we were at number three. Okay, sorry. We, were, we had sorry. two and three out of out of one through five done, so we got two. We, we I, really made progress. Okay, so three, me, jungle I, man, jungle. Okay. Um. You know, there's a couple of new guys that I'm excited to see how they play, but I just haven't really got managed to play it. Mm-hmm. For example, KPR. He's been around K- for a while, right? He's K- a- KPR, yeah, but he mainly plays Limit 08 and uh, uh, yeah. head, heads, up, heads Up Limit Hold'em, I believe. Oh, and Triple Draw, I'm not sure. I really don't know, actually. So he's, but he's he, playing No Limit now? 
yeah, he's been playing a bunch of people, and he won't play me yet. He sat me a couple times I wasn't there, but we haven't gotten to play. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm kind of excited to play him because it'll be interesting to see what somebody with a much more mathematical background, how they're going to be. Because when you look at Heads Up No Limit compared to a lot of other game types, I think you get a little bit less of the math guys because it's more about spots, you know, and it's more about understanding what your opponent's doing in big situations. And it's less about just the mathematical accuracies of a given situation, whereas Limit is exactly the opposite of that. Limit is you need to be all about having the exact right proportion of things and knowing what you can't fold because then you fold too much, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so are you putting him on your top five list? I I am not, but he's he's someone to watch out for for sure. Okay, up and, he's like an up and comer. He's an up and comer, definitely. I, I I'm gonna have to play him. Who knows? Maybe maybe he'll be on the list. All right. He well. told me a, a week ago or so that if I ever had a time where I wasn't doing an interview, he'd play me. <laughs> is, is that is he trying to say that you do a lot of interviews? Yeah, he he was like just. So you've done a few, couple interviews on the two plus two poker cast. Is that it? I, I, I get. I've done a couple with uh, a few of the other websites. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I definitely have done my fair share of publicity type stuff. I, I think he was just trying to berate me. <laughs> I think. I think someone. I think in this day and age where American, the American poker world <laughs> online is becoming less and less prevalent, it's good that there is an American person at least putting himself out there and garnering some publicity just so Americans are stay interested in it because, you know, as all the more popular Americans aren't playing anymore, like the Phil Ivies and the Durs, Americans yeah. are just going to essentially start to become less interested in following along. Like, like, like most people aren't going to care about some random dude from Sweden or, or anything like that. Like, they might not know. I mean, they might, like Isla Dirks, he's like a massive degenerate, but for the most part, it's good that there's still a couple American people at least trying to keep poker relevant in online in the online world well americans are still the the best heads up no limit players by a, a considerable a considerable margin like look at the top i mean you have i, me, don't, I, I don't i don't know the top i only know two and three so far i'm, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm waiting right. to know the, i want to know um, the top who are they i'm i'm, I'm okay I'm all, right, all right so i had reagan on the list he doesn't even play anymore. I'm going to drop him off. I, I had all T, I think, at four or five. He uh, had some really bad sessions losing to like a bunch of people that were a little questionable, so I'm going to drop him a bit. He's done. Okay. I, He's I, 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 think, I think that overall, you know, if you look at who's left on the list, I think you kind of have to put Kanu at fourth. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of do, because if you don't put him at fourth, um, I just don't really see anyone that has done better than him really you know anyone that plays our people and has as good of a game plan so I guess I'd put Kanu fourth and then fifth I I just kind of feel like there's a drop off uh, sauce is probably on the list near this area um, but God, who would I put it fifth it, it gets a lot tougher around fifth mm -hmm. I would say I wouldn't say any of the Germans are fifth. Well, there's a, there, I know there's a, a guy on Poker Stars plays under the name Kerry Cakes that you might be familiar <laughs> with. Uh, Jason Moe <laughs> post as Clink yeah. Ten, I believe, on the Two Plus Two forums. He's a beloved. He's a beloved poster. Every time he posts, I know he just gets so much love and respect. And would you say he's he's number five? You no, know, he got he got banned recently. What did he get banned for? I saw that. I was probably, upset. Probably being himself. He he. He's a very polarizing figure, and by polarizing, I mean hated. But he, he just, I, I, I love reading what he says because he, he gives a different opinion on things. Like you give a different opinion on, on what you might think about things than the norm. Yeah. Like the whole PR, like the politically correct answers out for most people. That's what they do. They don't want to cause controversy. Yeah. No, you, you can't put Jason Mo and politically correct in the same sentence. <laughs> I know. I really, I really, I really, really, really enjoy. So he's banned you now. Know, you think he's ever going to come back? I'm sure we'll see him in some form. I hope so. Until uh, now, we have to follow his Twitter to get those. Yeah, to get, get those, those much-needed updates. To get those, I I love the updates. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I enjoy following him. It's so fun. You know, I I actually think, I actually think that he's pretty good. Uh, I haven't really looked at his game that much, but 
I think he needs to play some people instead of just braiding everyone. If he and wants, a, he needs to get out in the, get in the streets a bit I mean, more. He needs to stop talking yeah, about getting in the streets start, on Twitter. He's results, actually getting you know? the streets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any clink, Ike battles or any clink. You know, I don't <laughs> see any of that. So it, it, he still just has too far to go. Mm-hmm. It needs to be someone that puts in some time. You, you know who another? I don't think he's fifth, but another notable person is Asian Flushy. I've heard of him uh, before. Oh, he's been around yeah. for a very long time. He's had really great results, I think. Um, I remember on Full Tilt, I can't remember his screen name, but he, I know he did really well on Full Tilt as well. Yeah, he, he plays people too. Like, he just gets in there and he battles me. So, mm-hmm. I, a lot of respect. He does a few things that are wrong, and I generally win all of his matches, so I wouldn't put him at fifth. But um, he's definitely notable, definitely mm-hmm. notable. Who would I put at fifth? I guess... Man, it really is quite, quite a drop-off. Um, you know, I guess I'd still go with Sauce. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess, even though he took quite the beating in our challenge, he's a really smart guy, and he put the, he put together some really great stuff for that. I just he just didn't have the right uh, strategy for countering what I was doing. But um, I, I'd put Sauce. So do, do, so, you, do you know Sauce on a, on a on a level? Have you hung out with him at all? Have you met him at all? I've met a lot of the other guys. Mm-hmm. I have not met Sauce or Kanu. Never met either. Are you friends with some of these other guys on the top list outside of? Um... I I would say I would say, I met Ike for the first time in Australia. Um, I wouldn't say that we're like good friends or anything, but you know we're we're we're, 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 we're like. It's like most people you meet in poker, where you meet them, you might add them on Facebook, you might follow them on Twitter, you might. If you see them while you're in the same town, you might say what's up. Event, maybe go to dinner, but it's not like anything where you're you're skyping or having messages or you're talking about doing this, doing that together. Yeah, definitely. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah, that, those. I think those kind of. I have a lot of. You know, I think most people that play poker have a lot of those relationships where they're just like you meet people and you think they're cool, you think they're nice, you think they're something on that level. And but besides that, it never really goes anywhere yeah. from that point in time. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Okay. So you get to know most of the people. Uh, when I was at uh, in Australia playing the main event, mm-hmm. excuse me, um, I saw Victor was at a table nearby, and I went over. And I was like, "Hey, man, what's up?" And he was just like, "Who are you?" Oh, see. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I'm uh, WCJ." He's like, "Oh, hey, man, what's up?" But you know, he didn't even know, you know, who I was. So. Oh. <laughs> that was actually it was, it was actually one of the great things about Australia was I got to meet a lot of the players that I play with. Find that, I never, did you find that exciting? Like, did you just enjoy? I I'd imagine you enjoyed that. Yeah, it was great. It was yeah. great. You don't really get to just be at a table with uh, Tom Dwan, Patrick Antonius, and Phil Ivy, and they're just like prop betting and just kind of being degens, and then like I get to just be there. So <laughs> do, do they do, do they uh, know who you are now too at, at this point in time? Because those guys are like kind of that. You think about a, what a polo poker celebrity is to the public, those guys are yeah. essentially at the top, near the yeah. top of the list. Yeah, uh, I challenged Durr to some 1K, 2K heads up. And he declined? And he said, like, there's some bigger games and whatever, so I challenged yeah. him to some 2K, 4K. <laughs> what? And, Wait, what? Yeah, and Wait, then... Are you making this up? This happened? No, no, this happened. Okay. This was a, this was a thing. Okay. And then he what? was like, he, he made a comment that was along the lines of like, oh, well, that's more interesting, or something like that. And then ten minutes went by, and I was like, "So, <laughs> so do you think he'd actually ever realistically play you in any setting?" Hard to say. He seemed to be upset with the way that Full Tilt handled a particular issue with him, mm-hmm. and he told me that he'd prefer to play online, which you know, obviously, I would prefer that as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I also offered to play him live. It's it's. It seems unlikely. It seems unlikely that we're going to have any kind of significant session. Yeah, especially but, with all the jungle man stuff that's still to be settled. Yeah, I mean, like what is going on there, right? You know, it's 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 obviously it's kind of like a, a fascinating thing in a way, but in another way, it's just. I mean, I don't really even know what to think anymore about it. It just seems kind of ridiculous. It's very ridiculous at this point because they just won't play them, and they have this massive side bet and. Yeah, I actually I mean, had a piece you have of that. more insight than I do on this. So, like, you know, what do you what do you think about it? You know, I, I don't have as much insight as you'd think because I I haven't talked with Jungle as much in the past year or two. Mm-hmm. But overall, it just seems like Dur is just pretty much being a scammer here. It's kind of like, what it seems like from I I mean my I vantage point as well. 
he's paying Jungle a certain amount per month. And I think that, I, I, I guess this is what's going on, but it seems to me like what's happening is Juan just thinks that it's better to just pay every month than to play. Because he's just going to lose so much by playing. Mm-hmm. So you think- and, now that, and now that, he's, that him and Full Tilt have parted ways, he doesn't even really have that much incentive from like a Full Tilt standpoint to want to play. So if you were him in this exact position he's in right now, where he's not associated with Full Tilt anymore, what would, you, what would you do? What would you do in his situation? Well, if I was him, I would finish the challenge. But let's say you were him and you thought you were going to lose a lot of money. What would, you do? would you still finish? Then, would you just keep I, putting it off? I mean... Then, it I would, forever? It's, it's then I wouldn't have issued a world challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like, you know... I mean, right? Like, is it that hard? If you're not going to play your challenge, don't issue a challenge to the world. <laughs> it, it seems like from, like, what's actually the incentive? Like, what if he just never pays? What, what's going to happen? Like, what's really going to happen if he just never pays? You know, I don't know. People keep talking shit about him in the forums. I mean, no, no, one's, no one's doing anything. No one's... You know, I don't think I don't think Jungle Man's talking to his boys down the down the corner and you know giving him some a pizza and having him take this. You know, and like nothing like that's happening. Nothing like that's gonna happen. Yeah. So where's the incentive yeah, but, for him to even is, do it? The thing is, at some point, I, I just think you lose your fans, right? You lose your credibility. Yeah, I completely agree with that. You you, you can't just put this off forever. Like, frankly, in my eyes, he's done a good job of not really having this define who he is as, a, as like some kind of like scammer but I mean that's essentially what's going on here I would agree I think it seems like you know there's now right now it's the full tilt excuse before it's there's higher games excuse before that it's I'm there's not in the always, I'm, not in, I'm, I'm, I'm in the USA excuse it's always it's just always been something yeah it's always something I don't know I think it's I'm, I mean obviously I'm I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out I hope I, I don't think that anyone is very excited for how it's going to turn out because I don't think anything is going to turn out. <laughs> I'm excited to potentially see a turnout from it. But you know, yeah. speaking of Jungle Man, actually, with the full tilt news that people started getting money back last night, did you have any money on full tilt? I got my money, man. Is it a is it a bigger number or a smaller number? Oh, it's a smaller number. Oh, okay. Are you excited about that? I'm sure. Luckily, luckily. I lost the majority of my full tilt account balance to Kanu right before Black Friday. You're so lucky. Uh, are you... I'm so lucky. I'm I'm really yeah. blessed. I'm really blessed. So, how many scams do you think there's going to be from this, where people bought account balances from these, like the Busto people sold the account balance for sixty cents in the dollar. Now they're still Busto. Now they owe. Now they owe these people money. They're not. I don't think they're going to pay them that money. I don't. You know. Like, what do you think is going to happen here? You don't have much hope in people, do you? <laughs> well, if you read all the forums, it's everyone's scamming this person, doom and gloom, games are dying, edges I think are a small. lot of the guys I think a lot of the guys got contracts though, right? <laughs> we'll see. Or, or we'll see about that. I mean uh, you know how some of these people are like, all right, uh, I'll buy point five. You know how you know how some of these things work. Yeah, I, I understand how some of these things work. A but... contract is a, it's a contract figuratively, it's not a contract, an actual contract. It's something that they emailed over and signed. But it, yeah, sure, but I'm not sure exactly what the legal repercussions of this are. I, I, the thing is, like, luckily we're going to find out what the legal repercussions are. I mean, Joey, this isn't like, hey, I'm going to give you a bunch of cash and like you owe me it, right? This is like a documented. The the government, the U.S. government, is putting the money into the accounts, or well, you know, it's being handled by the. Uh, Full tilt claims administration, mm-hmm. but there's records of it. If you went to court, you could prove things. You know what I'm saying? This mm-hmm. this isn't the same as like uh, my buddy. Like I lent him like 20k cash and like <laughs> never paid me y- back. Y- y- yeah, you know th- this is a little bit different. Like this, like you could definitely get a lawyer or something like this. I think. Uh, well, I, I know we're going to be seeing a few lawyers, so I'm very excited to see how that turns out as well. Yeah. Luckily, I didn't buy any. I didn't buy any action. I never played full tilt. I love. I love poker stars. So I never. Good for you. I know. How happy. How, how happy am I? Good for you. I mean, I'm still getting 27k, which I will take. I will take any, that. Any plans for that 27k? Um. Yes. You gonna buy your girlfriend uh, something nice? I think it's gonna go towards my 2013 taxes. Oh, are you excited about paying those? 
Yes, super excited. I get excited every year about taxes. Yeah, it's like sweet. I'm in the highest tax bracket. Nice. How does that feel? One percent? Um, are you a fish? Are you a one percenter yet? I I don't know. I don't know the specific stats to know if I'm a one percenter or not. So at this point in time, right? You're you're debatably the best heads up player in the world. You're yeah. doing well with finances. You're in sure. a relationship with a a very nice, beautiful girl who I've had the pleasure to meet. Yep, all all true things. So where where is the motivation for you to make more money? Like how much more? You know what I mean? Like where is the motivation for you to not only continue to better yourself, continue to better yourself in poker and unpoker related things, continue to better your your few, like, where where does the motivation come at this point in time? This is this is a great question. This is a great question, and the reason that I like this question is because this is something that I have been thinking about a lot. Because, so like I guess two and a half years ago, I was at a serious low point in my career. I had gone a big downswing. Uh, Black Friday, I couldn't play in the country. I had a house. Uh, I was on a pretty big announcing before, and now I was on a further one, and it, it basically just seemed like nothing could go right, and I was going like pretty close to broke, and that's when I was like, okay, I need to just play heads up no limit, stick to what I'm good at, I'm going to go back up to Canada, I'm going to play some 50 cent ones, some one two, and I'm just going to grind this shit up. So for the past two and a half years, which, which is actually not that long of a time when you really think about it, but in the past two and a half years, my sole goal was to do whatever it took to get me back to a point where I have I am successful, I'm going to be safe financially, um, putting all of the pieces in the right places so that I'm going to have like a, you know, a, I'm going to be set moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I worked really hard to kind of get there. And now, now I've gotten there, right? And I've made like seven, seven figures from, from poker. Um, and it's like, now what? Now my, sorry, what? Like now it's now what? Essentially. Now, now it's now what? What do I do now? And I kind of wish, I was thinking about this the other day, I kind of wish that I still had the fire, you know? Because, because if, if I still had the fire, I could do so many things. There's so much there's so much to do and I still do a decent amount I still work pretty hard on my game and I make sure that I'm keeping up on it but like for example I, I wanted to learn PLO more I wanted to kinda of get into the mixed games I want to do all these things but not only do I kinda of not have the fire that I used to have I also have so much I have to handle you know I have so much on my plate I, I have to worry about you know is anyone first I have to worry about myself in my main game right which is heads up no limit mm. So I always have to kind of be on top of who's coming up, who am I playing, what are they doing, making good strategies, figuring out what to do. So I always have to be on top of that, and that's kind of that kind of has to remain my number one emphasis. Then I have to worry about, you know, managing managing my wealth, managing my pieces, deciding how much myself I'm going to take in things, deciding how much other people I'm going to take in things. Um, you know, constantly like dealing with kind of my my network, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have that next, and then I have my health, and then I have a girlfriend, which, you know, having a girlfriend, that requires some time. Girlfriend right. fourth? Oh, my God. Well, not, Anyone, if, not, you're, if, you're not. Listen, if you're listening to this, <laughs> please don't, please close your ears before they says that. <laughs> no, I'm ranking in terms of the amount of time. Oh, that's yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, okay. don't make this something it's not. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Kaylin. <laughs> you hear this. <laughs> anyway, so um, I have to balance all these things now, and... You combine well, that with honestly, with like, if I'm listening to this and I don't know you, you, you sound like you're whining right now. I'm not whining. I'm just saying that it's different now. You know, it's different. It's not kind of like it was before, where I really always felt like the world was my oyster and I could do anything. And if I set my mind to it, I could one day be at the top. And then now, I guess I'm like sort of here. I, I think I still debatably, have, debatably, I still have plenty to do, but now it's tough to figure out what direction I want to go in, and it's tough to figure out how much time needs to be spent doing this, you know? Well, okay, so here's, here's what I figured out, because obviously I was in, or not obviously, but I was in a similar position where I was unsure. I came back to the United States from Australia, and I 
had gone, I'd won a lot of money, and then I lost a lot of money when I was raging, raging being partying, and you know how, you know how that goes when you play poker and you do that, you lose money. And I was at a point where I, I was, I was like, what now? What do I do now? You know, where's my motivation to to play mid stakes and just play that for a long time and and not want to play 25, 50, 50, 100 on these on these uh, you know, other sites, these contract euro sites, and eventually uh, it took me months but i just decided that i'm just going to pick something i'm going to pick something i want to focus on and i'm just going to embrace it i'm going to try not to have any regrets and and that's kind of what got me back on track was i'm just like you know what i'm going to get i want to stay good at this or i want to get good at this you know with you you can do you can do everything like the world is your oyster the world is my oyster i think you and I know I feel like I can do anything I put my mind to just with my work ethic alone. If I want to spend 10 hours a day being one of the best piano players in the world, I feel like I have the confidence that I could do that. And you're the same way. So it's it's just, I think it comes to a point where you just have to make a decision and embrace the decision. Just try to embrace that choice that you make. If it's going to be you're having a girlfriend, you guys live in this country, you guys are going to do this, you're going to be the best at this. It's just about kind of convincing yourself that I'm not going to regret not doing that, not doing this other thing. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely important. But yeah, no, it makes sense. But you also have to figure out what, what that is. <laughs> All right, that's, well, that's the, that's, that's the, it's <laughs> a million dollar question. You know, I still am not sure if I made the right decision by, by kind of choosing the path I'm currently on where I'm still in the United States and I haven't moved out of the country. I, kind of, I think kind of for me what, what it's more like is how I feel is I just want to make sure that in my time currently where I have a great window to make money and I'm also very good at what I'm doing, that I want to capitalize correctly on it and not, mm -hmm. not be in a scenario 10 years from now where I was thinking, you know what, I probably should have worked harder. Yeah, where you have that yeah, regret. So, I think that kind of that's one of the main factors that rules why I still work so hard on what I do, but mm -hmm. it's just tougher nowadays. You know, it's tougher. I agree. So I, that's what I always talk about with my girlfriend is you know I want to make sure that I'm doing. I don't want to have regret down the line that I could have, I should have gone this path or gone that path. And that's where I came up with the idea of whatever I choose right now, I'm just going to embrace it and I'm going to try because I never really regretted anything, even. Losing a lot of money, I don't ever. I don't really regret. I think it helped me learn and develop into the person that I'll end up. I am now, and that I'll end up being. Yeah, the, the the losing money thing is really, is really tough. It's really tough. And one thing that I've learned about that is I think that I handle it better than almost anyone, because yeah, I've had so many spots where, you know, I'm playing in like a new bigger game or a new higher stakes game. And now I have way more in the line. And then a lot of times that stuff goes badly. I mean, if you play higher stakes pretty consistently, then some of those sessions where you're playing like the highest stakes that you play are going to go bad. That's just the way it goes. And mm -hmm. I've just always managed to, to like, after I take a huge loss, to try and walk away from it and learn from it and work harder and, you know, become a better poker player from it. But well, how, how do you think you learn how to do that? When did when did you think you developed that skill? Because you think you always had it. It's it's not a. I don't. I mean, I think you don't always have it. It's a skill that eventually you just kind of grow into. I think way. a lot of it. I I actually think that a lot of it is based off of how comfortable you are outside of poker. Well, because like for example, back in the day when I was playing mid stakes, those matches mattered way more because it. You know, proportionally, it was a lot of my money, but yeah. you know, if I lose, like, it's a big deal when your banker goes from like forty to like thirty k. You know, um, so that's a huge deal. But it's not really a big deal if your bankroll go, uh, you know, goes from like two million to like one point five million or something. You know, because even though I mean, it, it's a huge deal. You lost five. Yeah. I just want to say for anyone listening to this. <laughs> Try not to notice the you knows and likes yeah. that we've been saying. I've been saying a couple, but I know I I, I'm I always bad. think about them since very I started doing podcasts. I know we're gonna get you better at it over time, time, though. I promise. With time, not right now, though. right? It's just yeah. No. 
important. We're like an hour and ten minutes, five minutes into this thing at this point yeah. in time. We're, we're, we're in our zone. We'll, we'll so. wait for that. But what it changes in your life to go from, let's say, 2 million to 1.5 million, it, it doesn't really change anything. Like, what, what changes? You know, nothing. You're still in the same situation. But, but even though you're in the same situation, sometimes you mind fuck yourself. You're like, I, you know what? Wow, I lost 500,000. Like, I need to get back to that. I need to get back to this 2 million mark. And then at that point is when you start pressing and making poor decisions. So you think you're, you're strong at not doing that, not having that happen. Yeah, I, I just try to not let it affect me. It's pointless. It doesn't do anything for you. I mean, in theory, in a perfect world, that's correct. But even me, some, I mean, you know, it's like I'm up, you know, I'm up 10K today or I'm up 20K today. And then you lose 1,000. You're like, oh, my God, I gotta, if I don't get this $1,000 back, I'm going to, you know, my day is going to be ruined or something like that. And that's, I think, what I'm, the mentality and the mindset a lot of people out there have. I used to have that, and that's one of the big things that held me back until I finally kind of shook that somehow. Yeah, you just can't have that mindset. It, it's actually, it's, it's interesting to me because I obviously have a bunch of poker friends, and then some of the, some of the people that like, I think are good poker players or you know, they're smart guys, they get really rattled. Like I'll, I'll have like one of my friends be like, oh yeah, I lost like, you know, 30k to this guy. Like, oh, he's so bad, and I'll be like, oh, what were the stakes? He's like, oh, 25.50. It's like, dude, that's that's six buy-ins. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or like, I, I saw this other match where somebody won like 240k off of someone else at high stakes, and one of my friends was like, dude, that guy got crushed. And I was like, oh, they played 200, 400. That's six buy-ins. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Or, or yeah. like, let's say you're going into a match and. This actually happened to me at the end of the sauce challenge. You go into a match and you're expecting someone to play one way because in your last session they played like that, and you know you did your study and your review based on that, and then they come out with something totally different, right? Some brand new shit that's like they totally changed their strategy. I I kind of feel like a lot of people get like, oh man, like I don't know what's going on. I want to sit out. Like I, I I'm I'm like confused or whatever. Whereas like I I kind of look at it. I'm like oh. We have an opportunity to, like, you know, kind of solve this puzzle now. Like, what's going on? And then, like, while I'm playing, I'm, like, trying to solve the puzzle, you know? And I, I, don't, really, I don't really care about if I'm winning or losing because I believe in myself that what I'm doing is good and that I'm smart and able to figure that kind of stuff out. So I just, it just doesn't phase me when I start losing. It, just, it really just doesn't. And that, that's, that's really important. And heads up, I, I've played so many... I've played so many guys where, you know, I know that if I lose my fifth or tenth buy-in in a session, I'm going to still just be able to kind of bring my game to the table. But if they lose their tenth buy-in, like, the floodgates are opening, you know? So that, that's a really important element, a heads up. Do you think Isildur fits in that, um, fits in that kind of... I, I, actually, I actually think that he doesn't really change his play that much based on how he's doing. Um, he might be slightly more aggressive if he's winning, but... I, I think he plays pretty similar. So when you said you met him in um, Australia, what kind of conversation did you guys have? Any conversations? Did you guys talk about anything fun, interesting? We, talk shit. We, you know, talk, uh, we talked a little bit. We talked a little bit. Um, he he asked me. He said, "So in your honest opinion, and like, don't lie to me. What do you think about my heads up no limit game?" Interesting. What'd you tell him? Uh, I told him that. I think overall he plays pretty good, but he does like several small things wrong, mm -hmm. which which is you know which is fair. I think that's a fair assessment. You thought he played bad sometimes. Would you tell him that? Well, it, it depends on how we're gonna want to classify bad, right? Mm -hmm. Because like compared to compared to like the top few guys, he's not there. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But like compared to like the overall heads of population, he still he still does some stuff that's tough to deal with, you know. So. It, it, it's kind of a, a delicate, a delicate line to walk. But yeah, if he was just straight bad, I would tell him he was just bad. Better, better, I'd, uh, I'd, you know, tell Jason Bo to get in there on the Twitter, and uh... <laughs> you, you tell Jason, yeah, Jason could yeah, really tell go. him that. All right, guys, thank you for listening to the first episode of our podcast. We recorded a bit more. We talked a bit about the poker player that was on Survivor a couple weeks ago, but 
most people probably have either forgotten about that already or haven't seen it. So I decided to just cut that part out. But yeah, if you guys want to stay tuned for updates, you can either subscribe to my channel on YouTube or follow me on Twitter at Joe Ingram one or Doug at Doug Polk Poker. And we will post the new episodes as they come up. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for somehow making it this long. I think it's about an hour and 15 minutes. And yeah, have a good day.